वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल द लाइफ इन द वू दो सो हैव इन सब्सक्राइब येट प्लीज टू सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल सो दैट यू विल बी गेटिंग नोटिफिकेशन इन फ्यूचर इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डू अ डिजिटल बोर्ड आई एम गोइंग टू टेक दिस सेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ डिजिटल बोर्ड इंस्टेड ऑफ द ट्रेडिशनल वन सो प्लीज ड्रॉप यूर कमेंट इन द कमेंट सेशन सो दैट आई कैन नॉट वेदर यू प्रिफर ट्रेडिशनल और द डिजिटल बोर्ड सो टूडे वील बी डीलिंग विद द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड we will be discussing it under three main headings the coverings of the spinal cord the external features of the spinal cord and the internal features of the spinal cord so now we will be seeing the coverings of the spinal cord so before moving on to the uh, coverings of the spinal cord the spinal cord is roughly 45 cm in length in an adult male and 42 cm in length in an adult female and it is just the continuation of the medulla oblongata starting at the level of foramen magnum that is at the level of c1 to the level of l1 vertebra and there are about 31 pairs of spinal nerves emerging from the spinal cord what are the functions of a spinal cord it helps in the execution of reflexes so there are mainly two functions for the spinal cord one it helps in the execution of reflexes and it also acts as a pathway for the impulses to and from the brain now we will see the extent of the spinal cord the extent of the spinal cord differs from the intrauterine period up to the adult life so in the intrauterine period up to the third month of intrauterine period up to the third month of intrauterine period the spinal cord will be extending throughout the length of the vertebral column up to the third month the spinal cord will be extending throughout the length of the vertebral column that is from the level of c1 up to the coccygeal vertebrae up to the level of coccygeal vertebrae you will be having the length of the spinal cord and what happens at birth at birth the spinal cord will be extending from the level of c1 up to the level of l3 why there is some disparity like this this is because as the baby grows the vertebral column will be lengthening at a, an increased level compared to the length of the spinal cord so what happens is as the vertebral column increases in length the spinal cord won't be increasing in length according to the length of the vertebral column so the spinal cord will be ending at a higher level so that is the reason why even though the vertebral column reaches up to the level of coccyx the spinal cord won't be extending up to the level of coccyx so at birth the level will be up to the level of l3 vertebra and in adult period again the vertebral column increases in length but the spinal cord won't be so what happens is the spinal cord will be extending only up to the level of l1 so the spinal cord will be only extending up to the level of l1 in case of adult so these are the variations so In up to the third month of intrauterine period the spinal cord will be extending throughout the length of the vertebral column at birth what happens is it will be extending only up to the level of l3 and in adult period it will be extending only up to the level of l1 or the intervertebral disc between the l1 and l2 that is how we talk about the extent of the spinal cord why we are stressing more about the extent of spinal cord the importance is when we do a lumbar puncture we should know at beyond which level we can approach the subarachnoid space in order to retrieve the csf so what will happen if we go above the level of l1 you will be injuring the spinal cord so in an adult you should be going below the level of l1 and in a child you should be going below the level of l3 in order to take up the csf now we will be seeing the spinal meninges the spinal meninges means the coverings of the spinal cord like the cranial uh, meninges the spinal meninges again have got three layers the dura mater the arachnoid mater and the pia mater so this is the spinal cord and you have the pia mater closely investing then you have this pink colored as the arachnoid and after that you have the dura mater and the outermost one is the vertebral canal 
so the vertebral canal then you have the dura then you have the arachnoid arachnoid matter and the innermost will be the pia matter so these are the major coverings of the spinal cord when we discuss about the dura matter of spinal cord there are some differences for the dura matter of spinal cord compared with the cranial dura when we talk about cranial dura there are mainly two layers for the cranial dura the two layers of cranial dura are endosteal layer and meningeal layer these are the two layers of cranial dura endosteal layer of cranial dura will be seen closely investing the skull vault whereas the meningeal layer will be seen closely uh, towards the brain so these are the two layers of cranial dura but when we talk about spinal dura the endosteal layer will be ending at the level of foramen magnum if you consider this as the foramen magnum the endosteal layer will be ending at the level of foramen magnum and only the inner meningeal layer will be continuing down through the foramen magnum and will be covering the spinal cord so you get only the meningeal layer in case of spinal dura whereas in the cranial cavity you get both the layers the endosteal layer and meningeal layer now talking about folds when you have studied about the cranial dura we have discussed about the different folds of cranial dura they are false cerebri false cerebri false cerebelli tenturium cerebelli tenturium cerebelli and diaphragma cellae these are the different dural folds which we get in the cranial cavity but these folds are absent in case of spinal dura that is another difference now talking about the epidural space epidural space is a very important space uh, and it is related to the spinal cord what is epidural space when we discuss, discussed about the meningeal layer extending down this is actually coming through the vertebral canal you have the vertebral canal and the sp uh, spinal meninges is extending down so there is a space between the vertebra and this meningeal layer this space this space is known as the epidural space the space between the meningeal layer and the vertebral canal is known as the epidural space but when we discuss about the cranial dura there is no space called epidural space why because the endosteal layer is actually seen closely investing the cranial wall and there is no space between the endosteal layer and the bone but when we come to the spinal dura there is a space between the vertebral canal and the spinal meninges and that is known as epidural space what do you get inside the epidural space in the epidural space you have loose areolar tissue you have the semi liquid fat and the internal vertebral venous plexus these are the contents which we get in the epidural space and the applied aspect of epidural space is we make use of the space to give epidural anesthesia now let's see the next layer the next layer is known as arachnoid matter arachnoid matter is a thin avascular membrane seen just below the dura mater so this is the dura mater and this is the arachnoid matter the pink colored uh, fold or the membrane covering the spinal cord is known as the arachnoid matter and it is a very thin avascular membrane so we have discussed about a space known as epidural space here that is outside the dura there is a space between the dura and the arachnoid that is known as subdural space so the dura has got a space outside the dura you call it as epidural space and a space just below the dura that is between the arachnoid and dura that is known as subdural space and it contains a thin layer of capillary fluid now coming to the innermost layer that is the pia mater so the innermost layer is known as the pia mater and it is closely investing the spinal cord and what are the features of pia mater pia mater as we have already mentioned has got many modifications the modifications of pia mater are phylum terminale subarachnoid septum 
linea splendens and ligamentum denticulatum. These are the main four modifications of pia mater. So before moving on to the pia mater, I would like to talk about the extent of dura and arachnoid matter. Up to which level the dura matter and arachnoid matter extends. If we consider these as the vertebral canal, we have already discussed that the spinal cord is extending up to the level of L1 in case of adults. And the covering, the dura and the arachnoid will be extending up to the level of S2, that is the lowermost limit of the dura and arachnoid. But what about the pia mater? The pia mater is actually closely investing the spinal cord and there is an extension of pia mater starting from the lowermost end of the spinal cord and it will be piercing the dura and it will reach up to the level of the coccygeal vertebra. So the pia mater extends up to the level of up to the level of coccyx. That is how we put the extent of the pia mater. So this point you have to keep in mind because the dura mater and arachnoid extends up to the level of S2, whereas the pia mater extends even beyond as a modification known as phylum terminal up to the level of coccygeal vertebra. These all things are favorite questions for the examiners, and most of the students go wrong when they are asked twice or thrice. So the level of spinal cord, the spinal cord ends at the level of L3 in a child and at the level of L1 in case of an adult. And the coverings of the spinal cord, they are the dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater. Dura and arachnoid will reach up to the level of S2 whereas the pia mater will be closely investing the spinal cord and one of the modifications of pia mater known as phylum terminal will be coming out and it will be piercing the dura and it will get attached to the level of coccyx. So it will be extending throughout the vertebral canal. So this is just a diagram depicting the lumbar puncture. We have already mentioned the spinal cord is extending up to the level of L1 and you have the uh, dura and arachnoid reaching up to the level of S2. So what happens? There is a space known as subarachnoid space. What do you mean by subarachnoid space? You have the dura, you have the arachnoid and you have the pia mater. So there is a space between the pia mater and arachnoid mater. This space is known as subarachnoid space. And this subarachnoid space is actually the continuation of subarachnoid space of the brain. And this space contains the CSF. So our aim is to tap CSF from this space. But when we consider subarachnoid space around the spinal cord, it is actually a very uh, limited space around the spinal cord. But we, as we move down, we can see that beyond the level of spinal cord, beyond the level of L1, the space is actually ro more roomier because there is no spinal cord as such, but we have the nerve rootlets in the space but there is no spinal cord as such in the space. So this space is actually more roomier and this space is known as lumbar cistern. Lumbar cistern. So it is through this lumbar cistern we approach uh, to take the CSF in case of lumbar puncture. Now coming back to the modifications of pia mater, there are mainly four modifications of pia mater. One is phylum terminal, second one is subarachnoid septum, third one is linea splendens and fourth one is ligamentum denticulatum. Let's see first the phylum terminal. Phylum terminal is actually a non-nervous tissue which is extending just from the tip of the spinal cord. What do you call the lowermost end of the spinal cord? This lowermost end of spinal cord is known as cornus medullaris cornus medullaris. So from the tip of cornus medullaris you can see a white glistening thread like structure moving down up to the level of coccyx. This thread like structure is known as phylum terminal and it is a non nervous tissue. Though we say that it is a non nervous tissue it might contain some ner nerve rootlets of the second, third and fourth coccygeal nerves. So this uh, phylum terminal is usually considered as a 
non nervous tissue and the phylum terminale is actually divided into two parts phylum terminale internum terminale internum and phylum terminale terminale externum phylum terminale externum phylum terminale internum and phylum terminale externum the total length of the phylum terminale is about 20 cm 20 cm out of which phylum terminale internum is 15 cm and phylum terminale externum is 5 cm phylum terminale internum and phylum terminale externum centimeters and phylum terminal external is 5 centimeters so what is phylum terminal internum phylum terminal internum is that part of the phylum terminal from the cornus medullaris up to the level of the dura mater so that is lying within the dura mater and the part of the uh, phylum terminal which is piercing the dura mater and coming out and getting attached to the coccyx this is known as phylum terminal externum and that is roughly 5 centimeters it is said that up to the initial 5 millimeters initial 5 millimeters the central canal of spinal cord will be extending into the phylum terminal only up to the initial 5 millimeters so this is about the phylum terminal after phylum terminal the next modification of pyometer is subarachnoid septum and linear splendens. Subarachnoid septum and linear splendens are just the pile extensions from the posterior aspect as well as the anterior aspect of the uh, spinal cord. From the posterior aspect you have the subarachnoid septum and from the anterior aspect you have the linear splendens. These are just as of a septal uh, extensions from the pile matter onto the arachnoid matter. And what is ligamentum denticulatum? This is something important. You should be uh, knowing this point in detail. Ligamentum denticulatum, the word meaning is denticulatum means tooth like process. So, there are roughly 21 pairs of tooth like processes arising from the pyometer known as ligamentum denticulatum. We know that a spinal nerve is formed by the joining of the posterior nerve root as well as the anterior nerve root. So, between the posterior nerve root and anterior nerve root, in that plane, you have tooth like processes arising they are known as ligamentum denticulatum and it extends from the pia matter it will be piercing the dura matter and it will be anchoring onto the dura matter so the pia matter extension from the lateral aspect between the posterior root and the anterior root extending laterally from the pia matter piercing the arachnoid and finally anchoring onto the dura matter this is known as ligamentum denticulatum and it helps to anchor the spinal cord onto the dura mater. There are roughly 21 pairs of ligamentum denticulator and the importance of ligamentum denticulator is that the last one is actually forked. The last ligamentum denticulatum is actually forked and the spinal nerve lying closer to this forked one will be the L1 spinal nerve. So, it is usually helpful for the neurosurgeons because when they do neurosurgery, uh, this forked, fork shaped ligamentum denticulatum will help them to identify the L1 spinal nerve and from this they can count the spinal nerves uh, during their surgery. Now, we will move on to the external features in the next session.